Japan will launch a comprehensive study to monitor the impact of radiation exposure on wild animals and plants around the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. Levels of radioactive cesium in wildlife will be tested at 25 locations, both on land and at sea. The test areas will include places with high levels of radiation and those with less radiation, so that the results can be compared. Japanese red pine and bristle grass, as well as rats, frogs and mussels, will be studied. Collection of some species has already begun. Researchers will check plant and animal appearance, chromosomes and reproductive function for the influence of any radioactivity. The rate of seed germination will also be studied. The Environment Ministry plans to compile an interim report by March 2013. Japan's health ministry will subsidize half the cost to local governments and municipalities of installing highly sensitive equipment that detects radioactive cesium. The ministry will strengthen food safety regulations nationwide in April. Under the new safety standards, general food products will only be allowed to contain 100 becquerels of cesium per kilogram, an 80% reduction from the current permissible level. Baby food and milk will be allowed to contain 50 becquerels and drinking water just 10 becquerels. Some devices currently installed in local government offices are unable to measure low levels of cesium or are too slow in taking measurements. The health ministry decided that more sensitive equipment is needed, which can detect levels as low as 25 becquerels of cesium. Well, the March 11th earthquake left millions of people stranded in Tokyo last year due to serious traffic disruptions. Eager to learn how to respond the next time a major quake strikes, some 10,000 people participated Friday in a special drill in the Japanese capital. Last year, more than 5 million people were affected by the gridlock in and around Tokyo. Train services were suspended, and emergency response vehicles were stuck in traffic jams. In case of a disaster, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government advises people to stay indoors. During Friday's drill, the clients of a department store were led by clerks to safer areas inside the building. At Shinjuku Station, participants were informed that they could take shelter at the Metropolitan Office through messages re relayed by digital broadcasts and through Twitter. Using their mobile phones, participants compared information about available shelters and means of transportation. <laughs> The drill taught me how to check information on my phone before making any decisions. Ten minutes have passed, but I still can't get any update. I wish information would come faster to avoid draining my phone's battery. <laughs> Authorities say one of the main challenges in case of a major earthquake will be to provide shelter for everyone. As the researcher pointed out, a greater risk of an earthquake means a greater risk of tsunami. Japanese officials have drawn up new guidelines for tsunami alerts. The warnings issued to the public immediately after the earthquake last year underestimated the height of the tsunami. A panel of disaster prevention experts compiled the guidelines. They've been studying how to better alert the public since October. The guidelines call for the meteorological agency to simplify the predicted heights of tsunami. The current system uses eight levels measured in meters. These will be reduced to five under the new system set at one, three, five, ten, and over ten meters. If an earthquake strength is not immediately known, the guidelines call for officials to issue a maximum tsunami alert without a numerical height prediction. Such alerts will describe the incoming wave as giant or high. Officials will urge people to immediately take shelter or evacuate. The meteorological agency intends to put the guidelines in place by the end of the year. Japanese researchers warned that last year's earthquake has raised the risk that another major quake will occur further offshore. The Japan Trench stretches east of the focus zone of the quake last March. Researchers with Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology installed 20 seismometers on the seabed east of the trench. They analyzed aftershocks that occurred between late April and early July. 
The Japan Trench is where the Pacific Plate begins to sink under the tectonic plate extending from the land. Data indicate the 2011 quake altered dynamic forces deep inside the Pacific Plate. Before the disaster, many deeper quakes involved faults that formed when the plate was compressed. But new research shows that many of the post-March aftershocks involved a fault that forms when the plate is pulled apart. This type of force is known to have caused a magnitude 8 earthquake about 80 years ago off northeastern Japan. The researchers believe that the region now faces a higher risk of the latter type of quake. If the focus of a quake is near the surface, the tremor can trigger an acid tsunami. Japan will soon begin test drilling for methane hydrate off its Pacific coast. This will be the first offshore attempt to extract the substances widely seen as a future energy source. Methane hydrate is formed deep underground when methane gas is trapped in water crystals. The ice-like material can be extracted and burned like natural gas. Japan Oil, Gas and Metals National Corporation says drilling will begin in mid-February about 70 kilometers off the Atsumi Peninsula in central Japan. The organization will try to extract the methane hydrate by next January to see whether stable and long-term drilling is possible. Extracting the methane hydrate effectively is a really big challenge. If we can start commercial production, methane hydrate will be one of the few domestically produced energy resources. It is believed the test site could supply the equivalent of about 14 years of natural gas consumption.